Welcome back to the channel. And as many of you know, Steve Orlando has a new Scarlet Witch. I thought it was a mini series, but apparently it's going to be an ongoing. Recently, he talked to Adventures in Poor Taste about what to expect from this series. And it sounds like an absolute shit show. And here talking to me about that is the Marvel aficionado himself. Doc, how you doing, buddy? I am wonderful, and I am not anywhere near as self-deluded as Steve Orlando is in believing that this is actually an ongoing series. <laughs> no, there's no way it's going to make it to that. And I'm surprised Marvel even gave him this series with what he's done on Marauders. The sales are absolutely dreadful on that one. The storytelling is absolutely worse. It probably doesn't even warrant the 10,000 orders that it actually gets at this time. Steve Orlando is absolutely taking a nosedive at Marvel Comics because I believe there's no oversight, and I think we're getting a good insight into why this is going to fail. Talking to Adventures in Poor Taste, this is the first question that we're going to talk about. Do you have an all-time favorite Scarlet Witch story? And if so, what do you love about? This is what Steve Orlando had to say. It's hard to choose. Being a bisexual man bucking tradition in spite of society, the son of a Catholic father and Jewish mother who bucked tradition in spite of society, and grandson of a Catholic grandfather and Orthodox grandmother who, you guessed it, buck tradition in spite of society. It's hard not to point out giant size Avengers number four, the wedding of Vision and Scarlet Witch as a favorite. A human and synthesoid wedded and in love only in comics, but allegorically very relatable to me. Kind of gives you the impression that maybe he hasn't read many Scarlet Witch stories. You know what I'm saying? If I, if I were a betting man, which I'm not, but if I were, I would say... He probably started reading about Scarlet Witch around the time Bendis came on Avengers to do Disassemble. Pretty much everything since Bendis was came onto that that book was fucking terrible. Uh, anything that you know he brings up that's in the modern era, because I know he also talks about the Children's Crusade, which all that did was make the whole Scarlet Witch having kids more convoluted. He did bring up the Scarlet Witch and Vision series, which is probably the best series. Yeah, the James Robinson one's up there, too. But I, I like that Scarlet Witch and Vision series. I'm leaning towards he's probably just kind of backfilled and he's just tried to cherry pick stuff that looks good. I'm betting he doesn't have all that much. Yo. You know what I also think is funny about that answer, Doc? He thinks he's bucking society by being a bisexual man. Even being gay in modern society, you're not bucking anything. You're just going with the trend of everyone else. Get yeah, out of here with that shit. You're yeah. not bucking anything. You are not a renegade for being gay today. You are not raging against the machine here, sir. You are pretty fucking trendy. Yeah, this is right on trend as far as everything. And I, I love how the only reason that he could pick that comic book was because it all related to him. It is obvious. Well, yeah, whatever, man. It's not about you. It's about what's the best story. And I would say he definitely missed out on that one. But we had some more examples of why Scarlet Witch is going to suck. He was asked. How connected will the series be to the X-Men line? Is there any potential for a crossover with Marauders? This is what Steve Orlando had to say. Being in the X office, as well with Marauders, X-Men Green, and some things that you'll find out about soon, it's easy enough to have mutants come through, and you'll see it. We know Polaris is coming in by issue number three, and Wanda is now welcome on Krakoa as the Redeemer, no longer the Pretender. Oh my goodness, they have made this character so boring. She's a redeemer now, Doc. She redeems people. She was evil before in their eyes from you know depowering millions of mutants. We're not going to celebrate you. Nobody's going to celebrate the chick that did you know, depower millions of mutants. Suddenly, not only depowered them, she left them vulnerable and they all got murdered. Most of them did, yeah. <laughs> um, they're not going to just go from demonizing her to celebrating her but she's a woman she, doc this is a female x-men she needs to be uplifted she can't be treated like her history matters anymore oh yeah i forgot we just need to um strong powerful woman doc yeah i mean no nobody could possibly disagree with her for anything ever and if they do they're the ones that are wrong we're just going to wipe off all the evil things that this character has done and now steve orlando is going to write her like she's been a hero forever well yeah because that's all he knows how to do he doesn't know how to create struggles for characters this entire interview is talking about how she's completely capable and she can stop anything that comes through her way okay congratulations dude you just unsold me on this comic book the worst thing about that though doc is there's more stuff to come apparently he's going to write more x-men comics than just marauder scarlet witch and some x-men green crap well i mean why it's been maybe so bad. There maybe once again I'm coming back to my 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 belief that 
they have an internal p- betting pool in there to see who can reach actual zero sales first and whichever editor gets one of their books to actual zero sales, meaning no one orders it anywhere, they win. His primary editor is Alana Smith. They got that inside track. They're like, we got a guy so talented, he can get nobody to buy a comic book. If anyone can pull it off, it's absolutely Steve Orlando. And they go with some nonsense. This is the next question. Will Wanda's feelings about Magneto's recent death be explored? They absolutely will be explored. You'll be seeing that in issue two, for which the solicit just came out, in a killer backup story by Stephanie Williams and Chris Allen that features Storm as well. I can't wait. Are you excited about that? That's not a way to sell the comic book. You should keep that a secret. We got a backup story from Stephanie Williams. Bitch, that ain't a selling point. Are you going to drop the cover price because you're giving us this extra stuff that we absolutely don't want and its proximity to a comic book will pollute it even further? Yeah, of course they're going to address this thing with with Magneto. You know why? Because the last time Scarlet Witch showed up in X-Men comics, she created a thing where, you know, Magneto makes a big deal about how he eliminated all of his backups. Well, the thing that she created in her trial of Magneto's story was created so that you don't even need backups. I already know where the story is. It's the justification for bringing back Magneto. That's it. Well, he's going to be redeemed because she's a redeemer, Doc. She's not the pretender anymore. I know, right? <laughs> fuck this comic and fuck this. Stephanie comic. Williams is the backup on a, uh, like, like that's a selling point. This is the last question we'll talk about. We'll just, it shows you just how out of touch Steve Orlando is. Will Jericho Drum, Brother Voodoo, pop up in your series? This is what Steve Orlando says. As with any ongoing series, the real question is just one of time. But give it time, it would be wonderful to explore Wanda's relationship with Brother Voodoo. I think their relationship represents something unique, just like all of Wanda's relationships, be they romantic or otherwise. No one remembers that these two were ever together. I think they got together in the very last issue of Uncanny Avengers, and maybe it was brought up again in, like, Avengers Last Road Home or something stupid like that. No one puts these two characters, like, together at all, Doc. When I think of every single relationship that Wanda's had, Brother Voodoo doesn't even get on the chart. Like, I I completely forgot that they ever even, like, did anything. Well, most so, people probably don't even know what happened because it was involved in such bad story arcs that no one read. Well, yeah, and I mean, it was in that era where they were just losing readers and losing readers and losing readers. Well, not unlike now. Anybody that might remember it probably already quit comics. I got five bucks says whoever asked this question never read the comics, just saw some screenshots of them hooking up. It was like, I want more of that. I'm not going to pay for it, but I want more of it. Yeah, they saw it on Tumblr or whatever, and it's very optimistic to say that this is an ongoing series. You know, I know, and all the viewers know that this thing is a five-issue limited series with no potential for ever getting expanded past that. Never. Not in a million years. I'm willing to give the benefit of the doubt here and maybe go to 10 issues. There's no way the sales will be nothing on day one and will go down from there. There's no way it goes anywhere near 10. Have, Have they solicited this book yet? Yes, they solicited. Oh, okay. Issues. All right. Then, yeah, no, it's dead. Never mind. It's, it's, it's just no way. Steve Orlando is not a draw. Scarlet Witch by herself really isn't much of a draw. And with what they've done in the X-Men office with Scarlet Witch with Trial of Magneto, there's a big, enormous amount of stink on the character. And then if you go over to the MCU, not exactly a, a hot character there either after the WandaVision series. And then the debacle that happened in Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. This is a bad time to put this series out, and it's an even worse time to put Steve Orlando's name on. The dude can't sell dick. Scarlet Witch has never been able to carry a series. I know Marvel wants to make it that. They tried with a TV show. They tried with you know having her co-starring in Doctor Strange 2. Uh, they've tried shoving out these books. And look, they even, in theory, gave Steve Orlando a great penciler in Sarah Pacelli. But based on the preview pages that I'm seeing, she's putting about a third of the time into that that she's ever done into anything else because they look terrible. She doesn't look like she gives a damn. And I think it's a pretty much foregone conclusion that there are some characters that just can't carry an ongoing series. And Scarlet Witch is one of them. 
Absolutely. And there are some writers who can't carry an ongoing series, and Steve Orlando is one of them as well. I believe Murado is going to get canceled pretty soon because the, the sales just aren't there. And he's, he's in a terrible spot right now, Doc. He was not terrible at DC Comics, but apparently he's been exposed without their editorial support. He cannot do anything competent these days. Well, that would require Marvel to have a competent editor in the building, and they don't. This is not the first time I've talked about one of Steve Orlando's dazzling interviews. In fact, I would say that the man is a putz just based on some of the other things that I remember reading about Steve Orlando and some things that he said. I actually broke it all down that Steve Orlando is an absolute putz. Just ask him. If you haven't seen this video, definitely check it out. If you don't see it here, there's also a link in the video description.